Man, I am so nervous to go downstairs right now. Okay, it's dry. Oh, thank God. Okay, looks good. What's up guys? So I am trying to find something that I hope I didn't throw away like a dummy. Let me give you guys some context. So I have the Sunday free coaster and the Sunday free coaster uses the same mechanism as the Odyssey clutch free coaster. So what that means is all the parts are pretty much interchangeable and everything. It started sticking on me recently and I figured it was due time to, you know, take it apart and grease everything up. But the problem is it's been like every time I pedal, it feels like somebody's like hitting the brakes while I'm pedaling. So that's, there's like a significant amount of resistance. So what I think I have missing, and I'm gonna check here in a second, is right here where the driver and this little collar meet, there's supposed to be a bearing there. And I'm pretty sure that I didn't put that bearing back in. So that would make sense as to why I'm having issues pedaling my bike like it's so much resistance that I just have to stop riding it like I can't I can't pedal that much it, it's way too much for me so I want to take it apart and see if that bearing is missing if it's missing and I didn't just find it I'm gonna have to order it I don't know why guys I'm telling you all this but that's part of the reason why I haven't been riding lately why there haven't been any bike videos because I've been having issues with my bike as well as dude it's been raining like crazy like it's just it's so much rain those poor cows, man. I don't even know. Like, I don't know how they handle it. It rains. It's been raining every day for I don't even know how long. And so I've been having, you know, I've been so worried about our house flooding again. Like, dude, check this out. This is probably just me being lazy, by the way. But I just want to point this out. I finally, there's my dog. Hey, bud. So I finally started cutting the back grass area because there's so much going on with the basement and everything flooding. I'm going to show you guys that here in a second, too. That I finally started to cut the grass last night. I kid you not. All of this right here, up until that point, took two and a half freaking hours. It started to, you know, the weather started getting really crappy yesterday, so I had to stop. Not to mention it was like eight o'clock at night and I was exhausted. And then it started raining like heavily last night, like I said, and it started puddling. This whole section started puddling like it was last time. Like you can still see like a couple little puddles like right there. But this whole section, like there's some puddles right there. Like this whole section just fills up with water. And I just, I'm still having a hard time believing. Every every time it rains this bad, I worry that it's gonna freaking flood my basement. So here's what I did. So this weekend, my dad came out and he pretty much helped me. So here's what we did. So I'm, I'm gonna kind of break it down to you. So these are two by 12s. So they're two by 12 inch by 10 feet wide. We had to cut a foot off of each end. And what we did in between all the boards, if you notice, it's kind of scrunched down over here a little bit. We use like the rubber and like bracket things that go in thresholds. So it'll like keep out water and stuff like that. Just so in case water gets to, because down here is actually the same way. Right here, we have one right here and then we have one right here. Last time the water actually got to about right here. So we wanna make sure at least got this section like with some rubber, but we got about three feet of this wall right now. Pretty much it's two by 12 by 10 feet wide, actually nine feet, I'm sorry. And we got two by fours, which I'm about to paint so they don't get messed up over time. And we made kind of like a, a place for the wood to actually kind of sit in between. And so whenever the time comes, all I have to do is put the boards in place and I have to get some sort of bracket to kind of push them down a little bit. But when wood gets wet, it kind of swells anyways. So I may not even need it, but I am worried that if the water gets high enough, this, all these boards will get pushed up. So that's something I'm still working on, but I just wanted you guys to see what we got going on. We did the same thing with the door. There is a system set up for doors in case of floods, but they're like 800 bucks. This whole setup was, I'd say there's less than $200 here for sure to prevent my house from flooding. Like I am so concerned that my house floods now, especially considering so much rain lately that all of this has been flooding that this had to happen. Like I, I can't deal with that again. So, and then also just to let you guys know too, these pieces of wood right here, um, the wood was kind of warped a little bit. 
So we had a hard time, so this side's like perfectly in place, but we had a hard time getting that two by four in right. So we just put that in there and kind of getting the wood to stay in the right way. And then I'm actually going to move that two by four closer. So it's a nice tighter space between the two by fours and these big planks of wood that we have right here. So will this actually hold water in? I'm not sure. I don't no, to be honest with you, my dad and I just kind of rigged it and I'm just, I'm we're, like I said, we're so concerned with this happening again that we're tra we're taking all the preventative measures we possibly can. When Liz and I actually go on like trips or whatever, the plan is to actually put caulking around all of the wood and everything and make it kind of permanent. That way when we're on vacation or whatever, we don't have to worry about it coming like water getting in because I doubt water will ever get to three feet, honestly. Water will get to about 17, 18 inches out here and then the corner of the house right there is where it got to about almost two feet. I'm not too worried about it getting to that high, but I don't want to worry about it, man. Like the other thing that's actually going to be happening, there's the cows again. So this part of the driveway right here as well, our neighbor that owns these cows, he has a company with a bunch of like heavy machinery, like bulldozers, excavators, and bobcats and stuff like that. He's going to come out here with his excavator. He's going to knock down this fence right here where the cows are. There's a hole right there. Look at that dude eating. <laughs> it's hilarious. So what's gonna happen is that tree over there, it's actually in a hole. He's gonna dig up that hole to be way bigger. And the reason why he's doing that is A, to help us, and B, he also needs the topsoil for another project he's working on. So it kind of worked out great. So what's gonna happen is he's gonna come here, he's going to take care of this driveway, kind of get it at a decline, right? Towards that hole. That way this whole area doesn't keep flooding up to the point where if it keeps raining for four or five hours straight, like it has been, it won't flood our house. It'll just go straight into that hole because that hole has like a two foot pipe that leads all the way back there to a pond. That plus all the wood over here, I don't think our fl our house will ever flood again. I really don't think it'll ever flood again. Like I said, this is, you know, this is all the stuff that's been happening lately, which is why the videos are so far and few between right now, because there's just so much going on, man. But I wanted to share you, with you guys what we were doing, and that's pretty much it, man. Like, I'm pretty, my dad came into town from Massachusetts and he helped the brother out, man. And we got that set up in probably a four or five hours. It was pretty rad, dude. All right, I wanna show you guys progress in the basement as well because we have done a ton of stuff in the basement. Let's go look at that. Man, I'm kind of bummed by my bike, man. I wish I had the, if I wish I could find the freaking bearing. I can't really ride with that stupid bearing like that. I don't know, I'm gonna keep looking for it. Let's go look inside. All right, so doesn't look like we've done anything down here at all, man, but we have. We have all the insulation already, so certain parts of the walls have insulation. So like, for example, in here, in the kitchen, there was insulation all the way up to, you know, I pretty much gutted where you see sheetrock missing is where I took insulation out, so I gotta put insulation back in those spots. I haven't done anything in the kitchen yet either, but I can tell you right now that these cabinets are ruined. After looking at all of them closely, they all kind of have that bubbly look to them because they're all made of particle board. So I have to rebuild all of these, which kind of blows. We're gonna go in here and we'll see what we've done so far. So in here, this room is looking pretty good, man. So. There's a couple spots that I'm gonna have to fill in with a bunch of like compound and stuff, but this room essentially is done with the sheetrock. So my dad and I knocked this room out in like less than two hours, man. It's pretty rad. All the sheetrock in here is good to go. It's starting to feel like a room again, which is awesome. The closet in here is done. I'm not gonna move this all of the way, but take my word for it, it's done as well. And then this room as well is pretty much done. We got all the sheetrock. I kind of busted the sheetrock wrong when I was taking it apart, so I've got some patches to take care of some of that over there, but that's gonna be a piece of cake. I'm not worried about that. Closet in here is done as well, as you can see. And then this wall is the wall that had some insulation as well as this wall over here. So they're not really in yet, but my dad cut out all the holes and everything. They're ready to go. My dad's freaking awesome. He did that, he's like, I want them to be ready, that way you can just bolt them up to the wall. So that wall I gotta put insulation in, this wall I gotta put insulation in. I gotta start next on the hallway. 
I gotta put some insulation right there and I gotta put some sheetrock on the other side. Sheetrock is not gonna go in here, of course, because it's not necessary. But I gotta replace the insulation in here as well. Put some insulation right here. This hallway will be pretty much done. I've only done a couple panels just because I had some extra pieces, but this will be pretty easy. I'm not too concerned about it. And then the kitchen is probably gonna be the big one, man. And then I gotta come in here and knock this one out. So the basement is looking pretty good, honestly. Like, my dad came down, he hooked, look, I mean, like, there's a ton of sheetrock still. There's one, two, 13 pieces of sheetrock still. I think that will take care of the hallway, the kitchen, and the little living room area down here. And then, because I'm not really worried about the garage or anything like that. I'll take care of the garage when I can, but I don't have a truck, so my dad bought more just in case. I think we're gonna be okay. I think I can probably get away with a couple pieces, but I am gonna cut up to like four feet in the kitchen because by the time I got the cabinets out, they pretty much were molding in the back, so I'm just gonna gut it straight to four feet, put them up there, and be good to go. But I'm sorry, I know I'm boring you guys. I haven't put out a video in a while, but I wanted to give you guys a quick update of what's happening in the house. But that's pretty much it, man. Like, my dad came into town, helped me out tremendously. He got me some tools, just cause like, we just bought a house, the, f the place flooded, like money got really, really tight and he just, he came to the rescue and I can't thank him enough. He's, he came in, he came for like two days, three days, he was here in town with me to help me out. And he got me the sheetrock, he got me the insulation, he got me some power tools, the wood out there, like he hooked the brother up and that was awesome, man. Yep. So right here, the this is the driver, of course, and this is like the little cap that goes at the end. There's supposed to be a bearing right here. That's why there's like a space between both of them, and I have no idea where the heck it is. Dude, that thing's been gone for such a long time, man. I have no freaking clue. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so on the Odyssey website, you see that right there? It's a caged needle bearing. Pretty much is what it's called, caged needle bearing. All right, so if you notice right there, there is the driver. There is the driver needle bearing. There is the driver side collar. It's supposed to go in between those two, and I don't have it. I have no idea where the heck I freaking put it. And of course, on their website, out of freaking stock, man. Yep, so I can't ride my bike. Let me give you guys a quick update on my car too. So I haven't really ordered anything for this car yet. I'm gonna order the valve cover bolts here soon. I actually tested out the starter and the starter works. So I'm wondering if the relay actually went out because I kind of did a little jumpy roo thing here and this gear right here comes out where it engages on the actual flywheel of the car. So I think this is working just fine. It's just, I don't know, man, I have no idea, but Anyways, so I haven't ordered that yet because I'm going to try that with a new relay and see if it works out. But I haven't done anything else to my car yet because, like I said, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the house. That, I mean, it's been taking up a lot of my time, man. And I think this barrier thing is a freaking stroke of genius, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome, 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 welcome. I know since the last video I put up, I got a bunch of new subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. Anyways, that's it. That's all I have today. I gotta go buy some groceries. I gotta go do some more stuff around the house. And I'm hoping the next video won't be so far from this one. I have a list of ideas that I wanna do for videos. I just gotta prioritize time for this and the house and everything else in my life. So anyways, I've talked enough today. If you guys have any questions about this barrier, if you've gone through the same thing I have where you know, you live in a flood zone or, or you don't live in a flood zone and you got your flooded basement out because of like drainage issues from the streets or whatever, you know, shoot me a message or leave a comment below. I'll reply back to you guys on how exactly we did all this right here. But I hope I was kind of clear on how I got it done, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please hit the like button, subscribe as always. And I will see you guys in the next one soon. Hopefully with some riding because I'm so sick of this freaking weather, guys. Alright, I'll see you soon. Peace.